sunscreen? Squeaks, I don't think we're gonna need sunscreen. Oh, hey everyone. Squeaks and I just got an invitation to go visit Sam the Bat and his whole family in the cave where they live. We're just thinking about what we might need to bring. <laughs> That's what I mean, Squeaks. Sam lives in a cave, so sunscreen isn't going to be very useful. Well, Squeaks, maybe we'll need a snorkel and flippers, or maybe we won't. Caves seem like they might be all the same, but actually there are lots of different kinds of caves. Some caves can be wet and others can be dry. Caves are a kind of a habitat. A habitat is a place where living things make their home, like forests or coral reefs or almost any place on Earth. Caves exist all over the world and lots of different animals live inside them. That's right. Some animals like bats sleep in caves during the day and come out at night. But other animals live so deep inside, they never come out to the surface at all. Let's look at some examples of animals that live their whole lives inside of caves. This is an alm a type of salamander from Europe. A salamander is a creature that looks like a lizard, but is actually more like a frog. This is a Mexican tetra. It's a type of freshwater fish. Some can live in rivers on the surface, but many of them live in caves. And this is a pe'e pe'e maka'ole, or Kauai cave wolf spider. It lives in Hawaii. All of these animals have caves as their habitat. Animals who live in the same kind of habitat often share the same characteristics. Can you see anything these three animals have in common? That's right. They don't have any eyes. That's because they don't need to use their sense of sight as much as they need their other senses. A sense is how living creatures know things about the world around them. When you see or hear or taste, you're using your senses to learn about your environment. Try this. If you can, turn off the lights in your room or just close your eyes really tight. Don't worry, Squeaks. It's going to be just a second. I'll be right next to you the whole time. Okay? Ready? All right. Pay attention to your other senses. What can you hear? I can hear my breath and a little wind outside. And we can hear each other. I can also feel the temperature around me. And I can touch the table in front of me or feel my way around if I need to walk. What about you? What can you notice around you? Okay, let's put the lights back on. Yeah, that was fun. We can learn a lot about our surroundings even without sight. People and other animals that live in habitats where there is lots of light find it useful to be able to see. But we know that cave habitats are very dark, just like when we turned off the lights. Animals are adapted to the habitats where they live. This means they can have different body parts or other characteristics that make it easier to live in their environments. So animals that don't need to be able to see because they live in deep, dark caves also don't need eyes as much as they need their other senses. Even though they can't see, the animals still need other senses to help them find food, move around, and escape predators. What do you think they can use to sense things in their environment? Right, they might smell if another animal is nearby, or the spider or the alm might use their legs to feel where they're going. <laughs> they are really cool squeaks. Maybe when we get to Sam's cave, he'll know an alm that we can visit. <laughs> we better finish getting ready. Oh, it was really cool for Sam the Bat to invite us over. Oh, hey there. We just got back from visiting Sam the Bat. Sam invited us to explore the cave where his family lives. So Squeaks and I have been learning all about caves. That's true. Sam the Bat's cave looked pretty different from some of the other caves we've looked at in pictures. While they all have some things in common, there are actually many different kinds of caves, and they all look unique. Let's start with things they have in common. Caves are really just large spaces underground or in a hard surface like rock. Actually, yes, the fort is a cave. This part of the fort is in the basement, which is underground. But before we decorated it all nice and comfy, 
there was a cave here. Most caves are made by nature instead of being dug by people. The different natural materials that make caves are one of the things that can make them different from each other. And the reason why there are so many different kinds of caves is because of the different places and the ways nature makes them. One of the most common tools nature uses to build caves is found all over in oceans, lakes, coming out of your sink. Yes, you're right, water. When water washes against rocks, it wears away at them. This is called erosion. And over time, water can transform rocks in big ways, including turning them into caves. Limestone caves are made when water goes down through the ground and mixes with different parts of the ground to make acid, a liquid that can break down a kind of rock called limestone. The watery acid eats away at the rock, leaving behind empty spaces. That means it's a kind of erosion. When the water and acid have eroded enough rock, the empty space left behind can become a new cave. But there are many other ways and many other places where caves can form. Sometimes where the ocean meets the land, there are cliffs in between, and the ocean waves wash up against those cliffs again and again and again. Those cliffs sometimes have small cracks or breaks in them, and water gets into the small cracks in the rocky cliffs, and then begins breaking off and carrying away tiny pieces of rock. So more erosion happens in the side of the cliff. More and more pieces get taken away until eventually there's a huge hole in the side of the cliff. We call caves like these sea caves. Ooh, interesting question, Squeaks. It actually takes a really long time for water to erode limestone or cliff sides. It can take millions of years for caves to form like this. Some caves around today probably started forming before there were any people around. However, water can work a little faster to make caves if it's in something other than rock. Glacier ice caves are made during warmer months when part of giant glaciers made of ice start to melt into water. A glacier is like a big ice blanket that sometimes sits over mountains. The solid ice can start to melt into liquid water when it gets warm. The water melts more and more of the ice around it as it flows through the glacier. That hollows out big spaces in the glacier that stay behind during the colder months when liquid water freezes into ice again. People can actually explore some glacier ice caves, but it's really, really cold in there. But I can think of one type of cave that forms quickly and with something much warmer than ice or water. Lava caves! Lava caves or lava tubes are made when a volcano erupts and lava flows down across the ground. Lava is the liquid form of rock, just like water is the liquid form of ice. So the lava can flow like a river of water does. The top layer of that lava gets cooled by the air touching it, hardening the lava into a crust of rock over the rest of the lava river. When the rest of the lava flows down a hill and away, that rocky crust layer is left behind with an empty tube underneath where the lava had been. It does look a little bit like the inside of a straw, but this tube also has a lot of rocky ledges and sometimes twists and turns. Lava caves form much faster than limestone caves, sea caves, or glacier caves, but even though they're very different, they're still caves. Yes, it is amazing how things as different as water and lava can end up both making caves. Learning about all the different types of caves can show us how nature can change really slowly, like with limestone caves, or really quickly, like the lava caves. Which is your favorite type of cave, Squeaks? Aww. The fort is probably my favorite cave too. Any cave that I get to share with my friends is a great cave. Hey there, Squeaks and I are exploring the mysterious world of caves. They can seem a little bit dark and spooky, but they're also so amazing. We recently visited our friend Sam the Bat in his family cave. And even though Squeaks thought caves were dark and scary at first, now that he started to learn more about them, he's not so afraid.
Oh, but he still thinks that the rock icicles growing from the roof and floor of the caves still look pretty creepy. There's a good reason they happen, though. And it's not scary at all. Do you remember when we talked about how important water is in forming caves? Those weird looking rock structures that look like they're growing from the ceiling and floor of the cave are also because of water. And they have some really fun names. The ones on the ceiling are called stalactites. And the ones on the floor are called stalagmites. Now, those words sound kind of the same. So here's a little trick that you can use to remember which is which. The word stalactites has the letter C in it. And the word ceiling starts with the letter C. And stalactites are stuck tight to the ceiling. While the word stalagmites has the letter G in it. And the word ground starts with the letter G. And stalagmites grow up from the ground. Neat, right? Of course, they don't technically grow. Rocks aren't alive, so they don't really grow the way plants and animals do. They just get bigger over time, and that's thanks to water making its way through the cave. Oh, Squeaks thinks rocks are too hard to be changed by water, which makes sense because we can pour water on rock and it looks pretty much the same, just wetter. Well, land and rocks are changed by water. It just happens so slowly that we can't see it with our eyes. But we can do an investigation to help show us how this happens. Okay, for our investigation, we just need a few things. A glass of water, a spoon, and some sugar. Let's start by looking at our sugar. What observations can we make? The sugar feels gritty, like sand, and it's kind of hard and crunchy. Oh, and of course, we know that sugar tastes sweet. We just got the water out of the tap, and we know water doesn't have any taste. It looks clear. Let's see what happens when we put the sugar in the water and stir it a little. Yes, it looks like it disappears. We can't see little pieces of sugar in the water at all. But. If we take a spoonful of the water and taste it, mmm, it's sweet. Even though we can't see the sugar, it's there. Our evidence is that we can taste it. The water broke the grains of sugar down into even smaller pieces, and these got mixed into the water. The sugar pieces are so small, we can't see them, but we sure can taste them. But what if we want to see the sugar again? Well, if we left the glass alone for a long, long time, we would see that the water dries up, but the sugar stays. We tried this experiment, and look, See? The sugar is still there. <laughs> hmm. Squeaks wants to know what this has to do with caves and stalactites and stalagmites. Well, when water makes a cave, it breaks down rock into smaller and smaller pieces, just like the sugar. These tiny pieces of rock get mixed into the water, and we can't see them anymore. And if this water runs over a crack in the ceiling of the cave, it drips out carrying the little pieces of rock with it. As the water dries up, it leaves the little pieces of rock behind, just like when the water dried up in our investigation. It left the sugar behind. If the water dries up before it drips to the ground, it forms a stalactite. And if it drips onto the ground, a stalagmite grows up. Over a long period of time, more slowly than our eyes can see, the rock piles up. It looks like a rock icicle that grows and grows and grows. So what do you think? Maybe they still look a little odd, but they're definitely amazing. Thanks for joining us here on SciShow Kids. If you want to keep learning and having fun with Squeaks, me, and all of our other friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here at the fort. <laughs>